Welcome to the Tuesday Review, the first live show in at least a year. I am joined, uh, I'm Nathan, I'm joined by two co-hosts, Alum and Callum, possibly joined by, ja- joined by James later on if he gets here in time from work. How are you boys going? Pretty yeah, good. Good. Yeah. good, thank you. Good to be back. Yeah, and good to be on a live show. It is amazing to be back, live on the air. Um, yeah, so we haven't really had a live show in about a year now. Um, and, you know, because coronavirus, a lot's changed. But we're hoping to, you know, get back into the rhythm of things. Um, it, it's going to be, it's not a light show, but there's a lot of streaming talk happening tonight. Not a lot of movie theater talk, because obviously there's nothing out. There's the nothing out. And the things that are out may not be worth watching, um, as yeah. we'll get into <laughs> later on in the show. Yeah, like, it is a positive episode, but there's also some trash we're going to yeah. have to address. We're well, always going to um, address some trash. Um, so, as we said, a lot has been going on. Um, we're not going to, you know, bore everyone with a recap of, you know, how a disease kind of took the world by storm and still is for the most part. Certainly ruined the entertainment industry. Definitely did. And the tourism industry and many every, other every, And every other industry, really. <laughs> um, but, you know, we, we are a film and television show. We have been watching things, even though there's been, film-wise, barely anything out. Mm. Um, well, well, show-wise, still a bit, a bit of content. Um, yeah. That's because, what, like three quarters of all Warner Brothers upcoming movies just got thrown onto streaming. Yeah, an incredible um, development. Um, we've actually been talking on the show for quite a while about uh, how hard it is to access some content that doesn't get a release, at least in Australia, or if it does, it'll be in a, you know, a few select cinemas. So this was, on one hand, a pleasant surprise, the idea that more movies are coming straight to streaming, but on the other hand... We still couldn't get some because even though it was released on streaming, some movies just didn't come to Australia. Exactly, they, they came. In, they came out here in theaters. In, yeah, in, in, in which typical, would be fine if the movie that came um, out we're going to be talking about was in, was worth watching. It was worth watching. But even there was a movie we were very excited for called Possessor, and this was released. Oh, that was last year. Yeah, yeah this is an old movie, but it was released in cinemas in America first, and and then it came to streaming at the same time. But it still hasn't been released in any form in Australia, and you still can't rent it in Australia, even though you can rent it if you live in other countries. So, the the digital kind of, I guess, what would you call it, um, expansion for movies uh, was a positive if you lived in America. But the industry as a whole was actually quite divided on it, with uh, prominent directors such as Christopher Nolan actually taking a very aggressively anti-streaming stance. Uh, and it also puts some of the theatre chains out of business, too. Yeah. Um, anyway, we're getting off topic. We yeah, were going to talk about, about what a trash fire that Wonder Woman is. <laughs> Wonder Woman 84. Wonder Woman, yeah, yeah 84, which... Um, look, that film showed some level of promise initially. Uh, the the trailers were cool. Yeah, the trailers um, were cool. And well, then and then they announced it was coming to streaming, and we were like, "Oh no!" And then we watched, and we were like, "Oh, I see." I, I see yeah, why I, this happened. Well, if you go back and you listen to our review of the original Wonder Woman, also directed by Patty Jenkins, it was actually a pretty positive review, considering that we generally don't like many DC movies that much, just because they don't really, they're not as good as Marvel movies. They're not well executed. They don't really have as much vision. Um, There's not as much of a plan. Yeah, exactly. They kind of just, you know, throw a fastball and see where it lands. Um, Lots of CG as well in DC movies. It doesn't always stick. But Wonder Woman, the original, was actually a decent film. We we didn't, you know, it wasn't a Marvel movie by any means, but we quite liked it. We liked it. Especially when you compare it to um, Justice League or um, Batman versus Superman. Especially considering the original Wonder Woman was as much a period piece as well as it was a superhero yeah. movie. It, it tried to do all these different things, and most of the time that fails. But yeah. um, with the original Wonder Woman movie, it actually did quite well, all things considered. The but only real fault was the you know the, uh, the the villain wasn't very well done. It was kind of boring. But you know that's why, like one big fault out of a franchise which we. Th- felt wasn't particularly well done yeah um so we had a pretty high expectations for wonder woman 84 and, and I, i'm glad we didn't um, pay to see it at the theaters we streamed it <laughs> yeah um, and well oh boy did they kind well, of backtrack as far as they possibly could well, so well, patty jenkins directed both films correct but the story writing uh for wonder woman 2017 was by somebody else was alan einberg was screenplay and Zack snyder Whereas a lot of the writing for 1984 ended up being done by Patty Jenkins, which right. So okay, it might be first movie syndrome where she she's sort of they given her more creative control because she did well in the first movie. Yeah, 
and she thought she was up to the task and maybe slightly was it? Well, it's also, it's, it's possible, but I feel like at the end of the day, the executives would have set, would have been able to tell the difference between the two movies because they're very, they're starkly different. Mm. One is, kind of, like you said, it's a period piece. It's kind of grey, browny, but it's still a pretty exciting action movie. And the sequel's very colourful. It's, it's in the 80s. So there's lots of 80s fashion, lots of colour, lots of 80s kind of like synthy music and stuff. Mm. But all that colour can't make up for just a terrible script. <laughs> the uh, the well, screenplay... You, 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 you can't put makeup on a pig? Or <laughs> yeah, yeah, you put yeah. lipstick on a pig, but it's still a pig. And this movie is, is a turd. You can shine it all you like, <laughs> but it's a turd. Yeah, it's... um. So first of all, we should mention that it does look beautiful. That It is a very vibrant looking movie, but the CGI that they use... It, oh boy... Yeah, the colors are nice. It's got that sort of pastel '80s sort of bright aesthetic, color aesthetic, yeah. which is which is pleasant. Yeah. Uh, it's sort of the Stranger Things doing the same thing. It's like a pleasant sort of a look, um, but the the CGI really struggled in this movie. Like there was a scene where Wonder Woman's running down a road, like holding these kids, and you can tell it's really bad green screen. Um, and it is shocking. Yeah. See, so the the problem was <laughs> the if problem you was continue she, that scene when she ends up doing the role afterwards. Yeah. You can literally make out that those kids are dummies. Like they are completely stiff. Yeah. Exactly. And she's holding two. Dumb- there was a lot of uh, things that kind of plagued the production of this film as well. There was like a lot of last minute reshoots and yeah. among other things. You know, things they, they needed more. There, there was some crap going on. <laughs> um, so we we can't always you know uh, like I said I'm not going to say Paid Jenkins was the entire reason this film no. failed. Um, the CGI department has its fair share of oh, look, <laughs> It definitely it, no, does. It takes a village, right? Yes. So yeah. we can't. A death put of a all thousand the, cuts. Yeah, we, we can't put all the blame on Patty. No. Because um, A, there should have been oversight from the look, studio. B, like, she should have had other input from everyone else. Look, it's some of the some of the faults were, you know, of course, like I've said before, I'm not a specialist. I'm not in the movie business. For all I know, I'm wrong on so many different accounts. But there's a scene in the film where she's running at a different speed than the background is moving. Mm. So it reminds me of the old school Batman um, TV show where he'd be running, but it's like a faster background. So it's very clearly fake. It's things like that where I'm like, did nobody in production see this and think, yeah, that looks, you know, like what happened there? Because yeah. it's when you have such an obvious fault in the in the special effects... Like, how did that... This is a AAA Hollywood, you know, million-dollar movie. You say that. And nobody caught this problem. You say that, but do you remember the end of the um, the Batman versus Superman movie? When they're in somewhere in, like, Russia, I think, and they're fighting the bad guy, Steppenwolf, or whoever he is. I oh, you remember. mean the Dawn of Justice movie? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. And they're, like, they're somewhere, and the CGI, the yeah. quality dropped. Dropped significantly. Real, it dropped real hard. It could just be that, like... It's, Sometimes they just run out of time. Yeah, yeah, I know, but like <laughs> I expect, I I expect, and this is kind of exaggeration, but at some level, you have to expect a big budget Hollywood movie to try harder than Escape Plan Two, <laughs> and it, for some reason they don't always re- reach that goal, and I don't know why. You know, it's like James used to say, uh, you know, the, the flubbery look, like it's some Toy Story. Why? Yeah, it. <sighs> It's hard to like. I'm 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 trying to find something positive to say about the movie. Like again, it looked nice. I wasn't alive in the '80s, so like I'll take your word for it that that's very '80s. Um, yeah, but well, it, it's very '80s pop culture. Yeah, yeah. Um, but at the same time, you also can't help but feel that they're um not leaning into a bit too much. But uh, let's just say um how to how to phrase this in a radio friendly manner. Um, they're pleasing. Yeah, uh, exactly. No, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's self, self, it's self-centered, self-gra- self gratification. Yeah. Um, so the, the, we're not going to do a play-by-play of the narrative, but the, it, it it involves a dream stone which makes people's wishes come true, and the, the big um, story point is uh, Pedro Pascal's uh, Maxwell Lord, I believe his name is. Um, he obtains the dream stone. He uses it to become the dream stone. He becomes an inanimate object, and then he basically becomes a genie, and he grants people wishes, but the, the, the shtick is that for every wish he grants, he takes something. And so the final climatic ba- climactic battle uh, is between Wonder Woman and the cheetah, who she asks for power, they literally make her a cheetah woman, um, as if like that's 
it's it's a very bizarre story. We'll, we'll be here all day. If yeah, we go through the that's what I'm saying. My point movie. is, my point is, the plot was like limericks. They just like chucked. They filled in the blanks with words they pulled out of a hat. And it really feels like that. The story was flat out bizarre. Like, I'll be honest, right? The whole the whole story, the premise of the story is flawed because immediately when someone can grant any wish, someone would be like, I want the world to end and that's the end of the movie roll credits, right? And that's the, the basic the basic story is flawed. Yeah. Uh, but, but I have one I have one story issue with this movie. I'll just get in quick before we um, go on like other sort of narrative routes. Um, there's one major problem I had with this movie in the fact that... So... Um, our protagonist wishes for her ex-lover to be uh, to, to come back to oh, life, yeah. and his soul or his spirit or her consciousness, his consciousness possesses another human being, and he doesn't change his look. He doesn't look like um, what, what's the character's name? I forget the Chris the, Chris Pine. Um, he doesn't change his look. The character the character remains to the outside world to be this random dude off the street, and so um, Wonder Woman. Basically, kind of rapes a dude in the movie, but let's not talk about that because it's a little bit too weird. Yeah, this this poor guy has no idea. It's like lost time. He just wakes up at the end of the movie. He's like, "Oh, I'm here. Okay, cool." But even then, though, she knows it's not really him, and yet she, and yet she knows she also knows the consequences of the Dreamstone because it's an artifact that they that her people were aware of to begin with. And the whole thing is just vaguely creepy. No, but like I said, the, the story makes no sense. It's like I said, it's like literally they pull, just pull stuff out of the hat. They're like, yeah, film it. Um, and that's and it feels like that. It really does. Uh, so that's, I think, you know, we, we should move on. Um, but do not go to see Wonder Woman 84. Uh, it shouldn't man, have been made. Man, am I glad that I didn't pay yeah. for this film. No, it yeah. shouldn't have been made. Uh, what a waste. What a uh, waste of a perfectly reasonable original Wonder Woman movie. Um <sighs> Good God. We, we finished our rant. We are also now joined by James. I'm in the studio. How are you, James? Uh, ob- obligatory. And we, we are live, by the way. Obligatory. I can't see Wonder Woman 1984 because I haven't seen 2 to 100,983. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. It's <laughs> an obligatory joke that you have yeah. to do. Yeah. No, I, 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 we were hyped for... Um, Initially. 1984, three years ago when it was announced... And it kept getting delayed. Because yeah, so I mentioned, sorry, so we on. enjoyed the original as, as much fine, as you could yeah. enjoy a, the, the DC movies yeah. before Shazam. Yeah. Um, and then, like, it just slowly, slowly, like, DC clearly didn't know what they were doing. And then eventually I was just like, I have no interest. And even now that it's on a streaming service and you can basically watch it for free, I still have no interest. I think. D- Don't watch it. DCs yeah, are no, just no. right off for me. Like, I can't. Yes, yeah, so you take that back. Snyder Cut. Give us a Snyder Cut. <laughs> uh, it's, it's four not, hours. It's, four hours is long. Is it going to be that good, though? <laughs> no, no it's going to be terrible. <laughs> but at least we'll then be able to say, all right, so Zack what, Snyder then, did a terrible thing. Yeah, then at least, it's entirely his and fault. And then at least Twitter will turn around and go, it's shit. And be like, well, you got what you wanted. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, but you, you'll see so many people will say it's yeah. a masterpiece and it's the greatest superhero movie or yada, yada, yada. Uh, not, it's not going to be. It's we'll going to see. Suck. We'll see. Release <laughs> the cut, damn it. Release the cut. I mean, who's <laughs> to blame? We could blame Patty Jenkins because she wrote it. She didn't write 84. But like Nathan said, it takes... She didn't write the first one. No, she didn't. Yeah, you said... You, you said oh, my, my mistake. Write, yeah. She didn't write the first one. Yeah. She I wrote 84. Like, uh, yeah. But it takes it takes many people to fail so spectacularly. So it's not all her fault. Yeah. Like I said, there's CGI things in, in the movie where somebody should have said, you know this doesn't look right. But this, this happens time and time again, like, and they don't learn. It, we've seen it in the other DC movies and Marvel movies. Yeah. But I will tell you, the CG in this movie is unacceptable. Yeah, it's it another. It's, it's might as well be Batman from the '60s. It's at even. Some point. It's even more unacceptable because it was delayed for so long. Yeah, like they had so much time to polish and they just didn't. Yeah. Um, anyway, moving on to something more positive now. Um, we've seen the first two episodes of One Division on Disney Plus, and it's very interesting. I like it a lot. So far. yeah, they promised it was going to be weird, and <laughs> it was. Boy, yeah. um, like we're not going to do a full review, obviously, because there's only two episodes. Um, we'll do a deep dive into that once it's all wrapped up, because I'm sure there'll be lots to deconstruct, unpack. But, like our initial thoughts, you know, it, it's in a sitcom format, which is obviously a departure. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. not. It's definitely not what anybody would expect from the MCU. Well, um, to, to pre to preface, it's about. Uh, it's it's basically it's set in Wanda's mind, assumedly. Well, yeah, so we don't we don't we don't really know, exactly. know but That's it's it's safe assume, to assume. Yeah. With the thing we have to find out is why and how. Yeah, but yeah. To set the to set the um the scene, 
uh, Wanda Maximov is, is that her surname in yeah the, yeah she's um Scarlet Witch she's living a happy life with her deceased husband Vision well, who was yeah because Vision died in, in Infinity War that's right and um, now this show just starts where they're just living a happy life a domestic in like a nineteen fifties sitcom yeah and it's and, black and white and, and so and he goes he literally goes to work uh, in in some accounting firm or or something well, like that yeah, they don't know what they, they yeah. don't know he doesn't know what they, they do <laughs> yeah. maths or something he goes to yeah. work at the business factory which is yeah, yeah. It's just and part she's of the joke. Uh, she's the domestic housewife and it's set in the tone of a nineteen fifties or sixties kind of sitcom yeah. Um, where it's like, you know, wacky adventures. There's a the laugh week. track, right? Yeah. It, it was filmed yeah. in front of a live audience. No. No, 100% serious. No. Yeah. no it's I did research. Weird. Dick Van Dyke was production assistant, and he didn't know about how big Marvel was. He They, they just got him on yeah. board because they were he was doing Dick sitcom. Ha- yeah. um, and it was filmed in front of a live studio audience, like a classic sitcom. Well, they went. They, I didn't know they put that much no, no, effort yeah. in. Like, the, the, it's like it doesn't look a lot, but it has a two hundred million dollar budget, and they, yeah. they put oh, that yeah. everywhere. Like it's filmed in front of a lot. They did it like a literally Properly. like An a old classic school show. Yeah, because I did notice the first episode. Not only did they take a lot of care to make it look like period like it was from the fi- yeah. Yeah, period accurate, but yeah, it just felt peri- yeah. like it. Yeah. And and I love that they shoot it sort of. Or long shots, like so, it feels like a fifties. And then when it gets weird, that's when they start doing more modern close-ups yeah. and editing. And that's just like then you start feeling kind of uncomfortable. uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. Um, but now uh, we, of course, um, were not chosen to watch the third episode. Some reviewers have seen three episodes. I, yeah, they got it. And in the, the word on the street is that uh, the more you get into the show, the more MCU like it becomes. I've yeah. seen people use I, the terms like it becomes a superhero show, but of course we won't know that. Yeah, uh, I, I assume that as as Wanda starts to figure out what's happening to her, the key, then um, she yeah. starts to fight back, and there's like because uh, she there's the the beekeeper or whoever that guy is, sword. Yeah, yeah who's yeah it's, he's got the sword. sword logo. So it's like they're definitely gonna have to have eventually he's she's gonna have to break out and have a fight yeah. or something. Uh, but we'll do a full um, story analysis and like you know context discussion once it's all wrapped up. Yeah. But just because you know we've been looking forward to this show since it was announced, we thought we'd have a brief discussion on what we've seen, well, what we where we oh, think look, it could be going. It's definitely a departure from what we expect from Marvel, which yeah. is a very big positive. I feel like it's very positive because they're getting a bit risky. Scale. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. kind of risky. It's, um, it's risky and it's not because it's a TV show. So if no yeah. one watches it, I'm it's sure a Disney that Plus originals. Yeah, the neck. I'm sure that I need, even though Kim Feige has said you have to watch the shows to tie into the movies. I have a feeling if you didn't watch the show and then watched, I think Wanda's going to be in the next uh, Doctor Strange movie. You'll be missing some things. I'm, yeah, you might miss, miss a little, but I have a feeling. It'll be pretty it's not cohesive, mandatory. Yeah. Like I feel like you could still pick up. I, I don't think they'd risk. Be... I don't think they'd risk everyone no, missing out. And I think in the movies, if there's required knowledge of any of the TV shows, there might be a little short thing at the beginning, or there'll be a little catch-up mechanic. Or... Oh, it'll be exposition. Mm-hmm. Right? They'll, they'll, be, yeah, they'll explain it. Someone will say, "Oh, do you remember when this they happened?" They won't drop you into yeah. the middle um, of the movie most that most Marvel on a TV. Yeah, show. most Marvel fans, if they haven't seen it, they'll at least be aware of it. But yeah. there's still a lot of casual Marvel. Yeah, like fans. Um, I I wanted to talk about how great the acting, the actual acting is. Uh, I was really oh, impressed. Paul, Paul yeah, he's having so much fun. I was really impressed with his his delivery, his performance. I was, there were times, especially in the second episode, when his uh, internal mechanics get all bogged uh, down yeah. with the gum. It's like a cartoon. Yeah, I was Rick like male esque. Yeah, he's, like... he's very his drunken performance. <laughs> oh, when he's dr- yeah, yeah, he yeah, was, that was, was excellent. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's also interesting to see it tackle the vision, how he works as a robot, especially when it has that old-timey aesthetic where instead of, like, the yeah. complicated internals, like the circuitry, it's just these gears. Yeah, I, I like, I guess in the in the comic books, he's very much more robotic than he is in the MCU movies. Yeah. And this one, because of the 50s, 60s aesthetic, it's they kind advantage of... advantage of that. Yeah, they kind of double down um, on um, that. I just love the fact that <laughs> he, the, 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 the gum literally gets caught in the gears, yeah. which stop him from... And I mean, if, it, if it was in the, the real MCU, in yeah. quotation marks, right, he exactly. would just swallow the gum also, and it would be handled. Yeah, he could just f- pull it out. The fact that it's he's probably not even real, like yeah, the whole that's what thing. It's it's like Wanda's yeah. imagined version, yeah, yeah. of um the vision. Mm. I just, I just love how you, you can tell that everybody is having fun yeah. making this show. Yeah, yeah, like you like you can tell right when like when a show is very dry and like 
But you can tell everyone's having fun. There's a lot of passion, and enthusiasm. Yeah. yeah. And they have to be having fun because it's live in front of a studio audience. <laughs> <laughs> also, a lot of humor in it as well. You know, I think that probably helps people get into it. Yeah, it's 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 a sitcom. I mean, but was it ghostwritten by David Lynch? <laughs> I know. Oh, yeah. That, there's Ten Lynch scene, points. There's a scene <laughs> in it. So the pilot episode has to do with Vision having to impress his boss at a dinner. Yeah. And he the boss chokes on something. And uh, who's what's the actress's name who's oh, also from, from that 70s, 70s show? show? Yeah. Um, she's his wife. It gets and super, as he's, super duper definitely. Yeah, as, yeah. as the boss is literally dying on the floor. Choking. It goes to like a close-up of her face. And she's just laughing. Ha! Stop it! Ha! Yeah. And, and it goes on for like what? It goes on for a while. Yeah, it's like it's yeah. a long time. Mr. Mr. Sheffield. And is she? <laughs> <laughs> is she? She's like kind of crying. Yeah, a yeah bit. and it's super uncomfortable. Yeah. And then Vision pulls out the um. Yeah, the, 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 the meat. Ob- the, the meat. But this, this is what we want. Yeah, you want it to be a sitcom, it's, but you also want to balance kind that. Of with the, fir- the first episode is perfect because it's hundred percent a sitcom from start to finish, except for that one scene. Yeah, exactly. And, and then the second episode, there's a little bit more. It's gonna be the weirdness that sustains the show for like people like us, anyway. Yeah, long term. Oh, uh, I mean, Callum, what did you say in the chat? As far as I'm concerned, it could be completely unrelated to the MCU. Yeah, and it's ju- if it was just a sitcom, I'd still watch it every that's, week. That's exactly what I felt just watching. It. I was like, I don't care about like the intrigue of yeah, who's yeah, this yeah. doing it to the, her. The deliveries of the performances, even just the scenarios. Yeah, like the magic show. It's yeah. really inventive. It's not something you see on other sitcoms all the time. Well, I mean, it's it's def- it's playing into the tropes of yeah. a classic but sitcom. But what I mean like is, like, the, the sitcoms I watch... But the fact that... It's kind of new to me, This old because I didn't watch old-style sitcoms. Oh, you know, I watched no, Friends no, it's very whatever. derivative of those old sitcoms, like yeah, those scenarios, that's, that's like the magic show like and the it. boss. It's like, it's like introducing those ideas to me as someone to who's not familiar audience. with them. Yeah, that's fair. So right. I kind of I kind of dig it. That's interesting, yeah. Alum, have you seen any of it? Al- no, I have not. <laughs> <laughs> Check it out. I think you, you might enjoy it. Well, is it as good as The Mandalorian? Yes. Mm, yeah, it's different. Yeah, it is. Oh, but look, look who you're no, talking to. No. So. Early to tell. Early to tell, to it's, I fair. mean, it's in black and white, if that's a deal breaker for you. <laughs> no, no, I've seen that. Oh, but that it, yeah, it'll, it'll, it transitions it'll into colour. There's, there's, actually, there's every, some moments of colour. Yeah, a, every... Brief moments, yeah. I'm assuming every episode, or every couple of episodes, will transition Toy into a, a new generation of sitcom, like 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. So, uh, should the third episode hopefully be in colour then, or some colour? Well, at the end of the oh, second does, episode, yeah, yeah. it does, yeah. Because the be first, inter- first be episode's very 50s, like I Love Lucy, and the second episode's very 60s, like uh, Bewitched, and then the third one transitions to colour, so I'm assuming they're moving into the 70s now, and they'll do like a Brady Bunch-esque. It'll be interesting to see how far they take it. You know, if, if they get to the 90s, you could have like a Friends-esque well, coffee shop. Oh, I, definitely, I, I, I definitely, they're definitely going to do from, that. From what I've read... Vision they, will be wearing like a turtleneck and drinking yeah, a coffee. From, and, from what I've read, it goes all the way up until like a modern family, modern day yeah, sitcom. It de- de- so de- it hits all the eras. It definitely feels like that's what they're going for. I mean, it's which, interesting, isn't which, it? Which... That's all I like. Like Callum said, that's all I want from it. Yeah, I don't. I don't want ever, ever to be like revealed that there's a big. Yeah, just keep it going. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's interesting, isn't it, that Disney Plus, so far, because it's it's early in its lifespan, especially uh, for originals. Yeah. But it's they seem to be hitting constant home runs with, especially with their Marvel releases, and I include Star Wars in the Marvel because that's kind of interconnected with the the publishing yeah. of the comics and all that. But uh, it's it's very interesting. Like the Mandalorian, uh, has its problems. But still better than the movies. Oh yeah. Um, and it's like the one, the Wonder Vision, really good. It makes me really keen for the next Marvel original TV shows, like the um, Winter Soldier, oh, yeah. the Falcon, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Because before I was like, yeah, it'll be interesting, but I think I, I think I was one, a bit lukewarm. Wonder Vision's a bit of an outlier because it's definitely so deliberately strange and it's doing. Whereas I feel like um, the rest of them, the rest of them are going to be MCU more straight, TV straight-laced TV. action. Yeah. yeah, MCU shows. But they're yeah. still getting. Get starting off on the right foot, definitely. Yeah, yeah. It's it good that they released it because they di- were they gonna delay? No, was it delayed or it was going to be delayed? Or I I'm can't not remember. Sure. Everything gets delayed because remember yeah. the ori- <laughs> remember they released the original release schedule was different because yeah. and then COVID happened obviously and that changed everything. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, um, like we're we're getting through 
all the all the content we've got for the show pretty quickly. Um, well, yeah, what, I didn't even know this was going to be the yeah. show. Well, I was just could, like, we're just going to play music, right? Yeah, but well, apparently I mean, not. No, we, let's, we, we'll go, we'll look go hard. Me we'll go hard. So, yeah. Well, yeah, Alan's yeah. taken over the show, apparently. I, 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 so I, I, was in the chair, I was in the chair at the beginning. But he's messed there was it too up. much dead air. <laughs> well, no, I'm like, Alan, you sit there, man. So we could use this time to briefly talk about our feelings about season two of The Mandalorian because we... We really Very enjoyed. <laughs> we enjoyed. We enjoyed season one, and now uh, season two delivered. Uh, whether the whether way. people enjoyed it or not, um, it was certainly provoking. Uh, it, it, you know, it introduced Bo- uh, an out of shape Boba Fett, um, and a massive <laughs> cameo that Alan ruined for me at the end. At, you Look, know, right towards the end of the season. I'm sorry. If you don't watch the show when it comes out, then you're a bad fan. <laughs> Um, no man, you should have checked first. Yeah. Now, now, first of all, so I think we should. I Especially wanna... with Callum, who's always behind. Yeah, I am always behind. How well, are I'm... you behind me? That's the real question. You know, I'm the guy that's behind most of the time. Yeah, that's true. I want actually. I have a feeling James probably enjoyed it the least out of all of us. So I want to start with James and get his feelings okay. on on season w- two of the Mandalorian. Are we doing spoilers? No. Yeah, spoilers. Yeah, spoilers. spoilers. Okay. Yeah. Full spoilers for Mandalorian. All right. Not a full-on recap, just no, a, no, no, I want to deconstruct how so, you feel. So, everyone knows I have very, very complicated feelings towards Star Wars in general. And at this point, I'm just kind of over over it. I do think The Mandalorian is the best Star Wars thing in a long time. And it's definitely better than the Disney movies. Um, it does hit a lot of the right notes. I like the special effects. Yeah, I generally like the cast and like the look of it. I like the puppets. The puppets, yeah. yeah. Um, when it does use CGI, that does stick out. But in saying that, the CGI is still better than the movies, which is crazy when you think about it's kind it. Of weird. <laughs> yeah, it's they should whoever you know the. You, you know what? You know what? I reckon half of it is is the fact that they use that technology where they've got the screens all around them, so oh, they yeah. can sort of Instead they can of green play screen, with yeah. yeah. But so they play with the CGI in real time. Regarding yeah. with the set. No, so but I'm, I'm talking get... about when they have to create a creature or something yeah. out of CGI. Oh, like, yeah, it's yeah. better than the movies, yeah. like the Disney yeah. styles movies. And, you know, that's, that's a pretty big deal. Yeah. Honestly, like, yeah, they, like it's they probably get... just because they care. I don't think it's a money issue, right? I think it's because they just care more. Well, John Favreau. That, is... Yeah, that's true. That's true, too, yeah. Um, but Like, for all, all the problems with the connections to Rebels, Clone Wars, Well, that, that's what well. I was going to yeah. get into. Um, is like, it's then... still... It still stands alone enough. I'm worried that going forward it won't. Yeah, I feel like season two definitely cemented that this is a Filoni... I mean, John Favreau yeah. created the show. He's a very important part. But him and Filoni together, Filoni created, uh, co-created Clone Wars, created Rebels. Rebels. Like, it's a live action... I said this when the first season came out. It's a live action continuation of Rebels and Clone Wars, the cartoons. And, and th- those cartoons have problems because of their deep connections to the prequel trilogy Exactly, well. and so here's where my problems start coming in, where the further Mandalorian goes on, the more prequely it gets, and I hate all that yes. stuff. It and could go over a precipice. I feel like it's already gotten to that point for me. I might continue watching it, but I don't think I'll watch any of the other live-action shows they've announced. Um, and, yeah, I just... If it's too for me. It's too much. I understand. I, I too much really, pain. Too much bad. Star Wars just has too much baggage for me now. I, I'm excited to see where the back going back to what I was talking about a second ago. Um, all, I'm excited to see where the production technology goes from here, though, as well. Taking it outside of the uh, yeah. outside of the Mandalorian, like yeah, the, I, the sort of the the techniques and the and the tools they use to create the show, like it leads to more immersive. I would say it leads to more yeah. immersive shows, like the lighting and everything else is. Perfect. Even if like, even if it just improves the acting, you know what I mean. Yeah. If, it's, if it provides more like, engaging experience for the actors, that's going to improve yeah. their performance. I, I just yeah. like I like the tech behind the show, and they're going to start rolling it out to other other sort of um, like productions. Mm. So I just think that's cool. It's yeah, just it, neat. it'll definitely be yeah. so a like, good thing. The, sh- the show has a lot of problems. It has some problems. It also has a lot of good things going about it. But I think one of the long lasting sort of things this show this show is going to bring about to the film and television world, mostly TV, it's is going to be that sort of that, that, tech, that, yeah. that tech that it drives. Uh, and for people who might not be aware, the tech we're talking about is essentially uh, very long and complicated screens that surround the set. Yeah. And they have 
essentially instead the of background putting, of that setting on the screen. Yeah, instead so, of just putting up a green screen behind the actors or in front of the actors. It's like, a giant telly. It's basically, yeah, a giant screen that they can project the environment on. Yeah, so the actors can so see the actors can react to what they're in. I think they still so they would still touch it up later, oh. right? Yeah, oh, of yeah. course. Yeah. But it still helps set provide the a, a yeah. more immersive environment. Also, yeah, and it's cool because apparently they do like a, it's like a um it's like a real time It's un- unreal, uses unreal engine. engine. Yeah. So like they change if like they want to change the lighting of a scene just to see how it looks, yeah. they don't have to wait hours into for post it to, or like whatever, into yeah. post. They just there's like a computer that controls the screen. Yeah, and it happens and they in have, real time. It's like it connected to the camera. Yeah. So whatever the camera looks at, the yeah, Unreal yeah. Engine renders it. Yeah. That's and cool. So it sort of they can change and fiddle with things in real time. So it's it's, funny, it's more, more cost really in the long term it's much more cost efficient. It's funny how George Lucas was trying to push the envelope with the prequels like pushing digital and CGI and he might have been at the front of that but really it didn't work out. It, those movies look like crap. And then, Especially now. <laughs> yeah, and then the new Disney movies, like, they didn't really push the envelope at all in terms of special effects. But TV is. But <laughs> now, yeah, and it's like now the, the Favreau and Mandalorian, it's like they're doing such a good job, like, pushing pushing the technology. So my complaints for season two, I actually don't think they should have introduced Boba Fett. Now, a lot of people yeah. on the internet were ecstatic that Boba came back. And I understand, because Boba was a larger-than-life figure, much yeah. revered. That's why I think they should have left him alone. What do you mean? You don't want a fat, middle-aged um, bounty hunter? Yeah, no. See, that's the problem. There was a scene I, where yeah. he's supposed to be looking all epic, whatever, and it's like a, supposed yeah. to be this... People, he's a 60... Yeah, people... people Tomorrow Morrison's a 60-year-old. I, I saw the word wick-esque used a lot. I'm like, no, it's a yeah. dude who can't... He can barely fit into the suit, like, playing with toy blasters. Yeah. I think it would have been. I feel like a much better story I, point. Yeah. To have if you, if you need to include a fit, make it a daughter or a son yeah. who's like that belong those that armor that of course Mandalorian, yeah. uh, Mandy as James calls him, yeah. uh, possesses in the show, for them to come up and say that belongs to me now, yeah. Um, and then you can have a younger, more vital actor actor portraying that role, whereas yeah. the Boba Fett we get. I mean, for a start, it's, it's the it's the New is, Zealand Boba Fett, which yeah. we we had problems with to begin with because it's, this, it's retconning. Oh, yeah, yeah. So this, 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 ties in, this ties into the prequel crap yeah, that exactly. I don't like. It ties into the fact that Boba Fett was you know was my favorite character it from should have been left alone. the originals and just just leave him alone. <laughs> and it also ties into the I feel like the second season did something and will con- and the show will continue to do something bad, which is to turn into The Force Awakens where it's just about nostalgia and it's no yeah. longer oh, about... Oh, you're just being jealous that he's from Space New Zealand. Space New Zealand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's like, well it, now the show um, Mandalorian uh, confirmed Space Boston with Bill Burr <laughs> and it's, confir- it's confirmed Space New hey, Zealand with... Bill Burr did a damn good job in, was, in, in the parts was, that he was actually, in. Actually, the last, the, the latest... Um, episode he was in he did do a good job Very, yeah. i didn't like that episode but it was a good job I, I like how he just killed a guy and it's like no it's like this is this is the disney this is the tv oh. show where it's like no we're not gonna wait for them to shoot at us like bill Burr just straight up murders yeah a guy. yeah that's that's the he's a bad oh, guy so it's like hey no yeah, yeah but he the was point shooting remember, a nazi so it was, yeah, yeah it's it, fine it made sense all right now but I, like it, it if it was a, if it was the movie he wouldn't have shot first yeah if george lucas had his yeah. way you know i personally love baby Yoda. yeah um, and uh, you know, Call the, his name. His name is Grogu. Yeah, right? that's what I was oh, saying. Okay. So the, he's this fifty is the, years old. Yeah, this is, that's a, this <laughs> he's is a grown ass <laughs> man. Yeah. This Not is really. The, this is the <laughs> season stealing, that revealed... stealing kids' um, macarons and stuff. Yeah, we re- they, oh, the they macaroons. Re- See, that was embarrassing to me. That that kind of stuff doesn't belong in Star Wars. Oh uh, yeah, you be quiet. <laughs> uh, so it, it revealed it revealed Baby Yoda's name is Grogu, which is fine because it's kind of in in uh, it, it works it, it in the context. Okay. Um, but at the end of the show. Um, there was the Reddit and Twitter were going crazy about, you know, the big reveal, the big cameo. And I'm thinking, oh, who could it be? And then I even said to Nathan, I'm like, it can't be Luke Skywalker. They would never do it. So anyway, and I was I'm, like, no, so no, it this isn't. was actually, <laughs> this was, I think it was December 23rd, I think. Um, and I was like, I'm not watching it. I, I kept away from the internet all day. I yeah. did a full day at work. Didn't even look at my phone. Right. Cause I didn't want anyway. So I'm on the way to dinner and then Alan's like, how do you feel about the new Luke Skywalker? I was like, <laughs> I can't believe it. I can't believe it. So I actually, I enjoyed Luke's cameo. 
for context, it's the big finale. Yeah. Um, it's the final battle between Mandy and um, what's what's the gentleman's name? Um, oh yeah, Moff Gideon. Moff, Moff Gideon, Gideon yeah. uh, who has the dark saber, and yeah. so there's that whole context, the rebels esque Clone Wars kind and of context the robots. behind it. I, I do, I yeah. do appreciate um, about that scene, like the last scenes, where it really shows you the sort of stakes the the uh, the main um, fleet of characters has with these bad robots. And then you see like a real Jedi comes yeah. in. And it's now, like, oh yeah, and he's now, just and like, it's like, it's like they so, spend their whole season slumming it trying to survive, and then like the yeah. Jedi appears and it's like just he's cutting like butter. Like yeah. butter. <laughs> yeah. Now that's what I was. I'll show say. you how you do it. That's what I was going to say. Was um, Luke Skywalker comes in the X-wing. Yeah, uh, uh, and you know it's and both... him and Boba pass each other with a really awkward encounter. <laughs> yeah, no, that's what I was, I was kind of hoping that <laughs> yeah, they're be... looking out the window. <laughs> I was kind of hoping there'd be some <laughs> awkward confrontation, like weren't you in the Sarlacc pit? And what's, what's going <laughs> I love, on? I love if Luke's like, um, you got that's fat. Another, can, I ra- can I rant again? That's yes. another thing. The timeline doesn't match up. It's it been doesn't. five years since the Return of the Jedi. Are you telling me Boba Fett was just hanging out on Tatooine not knowing where his armor is, and away. then oh yeah, only <laughs> like, what was he? Only only that when Sarlacc's ninety percent fat man. Only when Mandy got the armor did he go after it. But he still had his ship. Like it's just too yeah. many dumb questions. Um, and he's sixty years old now. When he, canonically he should be at forty five at the most. Yeah. So anyway, essentially, Luke Skywalker comes, which you know, I honestly can't believe they did that. I, yeah. I was thinking it could have been anyone from the Star Wars. It's, you know, I was thinking it'd be Who someone. Judge from, yeah, I was thinking it'd be someone from <laughs> Legends. Judge. You know what I mean? Because they seem to be pulling a lot from Legends, especially yeah. with or, um, yeah, one, of the, one of the rebels. And they're, they're including. Um, I'm pretty sure. Um, uh, the, one of the baddest guys around. Um, what's his name? A Thrawn, Thrawn is yeah, canon he's in canon. this. In they this they era. name drop him in season yeah. two. So. so I'm like, it could be anyone from. Le- it could be Mara Jade. It could be anybody, right? So yeah. I'm like, no, it was Luke Skywalker. Yeah. Um. The face looked Which, weird. Yeah, the I don't like um, I don't like that deep fake crap. Yeah, they, they should they, just they cast just another recast, actor. They should have just recast it. I and if, apparently if, everybody's down for it. They just decided to if, yeah. deep fake if, it. If they bring him back, and if it's not just a one off cameo, I'd like them to cast Sebastian Stan. That's yeah. the internet's yeah. favorite. That that, um, that fan the fan art fan choice. That's yeah, it was really now, good. One of the issues I have with Luke coming back is he steals Grogu, which yeah. breaks my heart. We talked about. Uh, did it we breaks, talk about this? I'm I, not, think we, I think we talked yeah, about this. It breaks Mandy's heart, right? He takes the helmet yeah. off. That is not the way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for a start. <laughs> um, He's changing his ways. Yeah, and you know, Grogu touches his face. It's a really tender moment. Yeah. Um, and then Grogu leaves. Who's What's going to happen? We don't but know. That's for season was, three, I guess. But my point is, yeah. who's going to fix the ship? In the time? So where's the comedic relief going to come from now? Oh, can I say, I'm really glad they blew up that shit co- ship because I hated that. I hated it. I didn't like the way it looked. It was pretty cool crap. I hate it. Also, we talked about how Grogu going with Luke canonically means he... He might have left before. Yeah. No, but yeah. that's what I'm ben, saying. Ben might kill him, yeah. The Disney yeah. movie screwed things up so badly that w- just the first thought in my head was like... like He's going to be uh, there. Kylo, Kylo burned down bad, the Jedi yeah. Temple and killed all of Luke's students. No. Now, of course, ba- they wouldn't kill Baby Yoda. And He'd look, get away or whatever. And, now, but, Mandy, Mandy didn't give him... The um the knob from the 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 gear box did he? I don't think so. That's terribly sad when you think about it. They can always. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but come on, man! Just pull it but out of the pocket. Give the give, give, uh, yeah, give, give your son. The I know, I know. He gave it to him at one point in the, in the show, so it's possible Baby Yoda has it in his robe or whatever. And I will just say it's also not. Sorry, like... Gre- I like calling him Greg. Yeah, Greg. Yeah, so Greg. there's Ma- um, instead of Mando, I call him Mandy. Instead of you know, Grogu, I call him Greg. So it's, it's Mandy and one Greg. One thing I will say that I really the potential is now there for a new Jedi Order TV show. That'll never happen, but if it's, it's technically possible, and yeah. that would make me very happy. See, you know? this is this is my problem. Is I'm going to I'm personally I'm just going to have to stop watching these shows because. That sounds amazing, but yeah, then I'm not saying the show like starts prequel, and not, it's just yeah. prequel crap. No, I'm everywhere. not saying like a prequel kind of idea of what yeah. um, that would be. I'm talking about like the old books where it's well, a few yeah, Jedi's. But, but we talked about they can't do it, do it that yeah. way anymore. But it'd be nice if it's just a few Jedi's going on an adventure. Yeah. You know, there's some learning involved in every. You know, they learn a lesson yeah. or whatever every episode. There's that kind of that high adventure great. in space. Yeah. With you know, occasionally Luke would make an appearance, like "Oh, you yeah. students," you yeah. know. <laughs> um, but uh, they'll they'll never do it. But no. it's an, it's it's possible. Alan, you've been a bit quiet. What are your thoughts? I look. I enjoyed a lot of it. The the scene towards the end where obviously he ends up taking his helmet off, 
and Grogu touches his face and stuff. I feel that was also a culmination of overall him changing his mind about what he's been taught. Because yeah. obviously the other yeah. Mandalorians have been like, you were part of a cult, man. They were too hardcore. Like, it's okay yeah. to take your damn helmet off. And he's like, no, you're all, you know, heretics. But he's he's obviously had to do that when he was in the, um, that weird, what do you want to call it, Empire yeah. base. Yeah, the Imperial base. The yeah. Imperial base and stuff. Oh, like, I, I and, didn't, yeah. And the conversation with Bill Burr about how, like, you know, all your, your ethics can kind of go out the window when, when uh, shit hits a fan, that kind of thing. Like yeah. I guess that's that for me was that overall combination of like what do, what does he care more about you know Yeah exactly at some point like if you want to progress you need to make sacrifices and that is I guess a yeah. part of his identity is you have you know for the greater good sometimes you have to let a part of yourself go and you get to see that sexy Pedro Pascal face Yeah I know which I think <laughs> we, <laughs> more we joked in, in the se- when we talked about season one we actually joked where it could just be some guy in a suit. I yeah, feel, you know I feel I mean? like most of the time it's a stuntman. It, it is, man. yeah. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> and it's cheaper yeah. that way. Yeah. Just get him to do the voice lines and that's no, it. Yeah. Apparently he, say, he says it's him. Yeah. Uh, he's always going to say it's him. I'm sure they've, signed, they've all he's signed just NDAs. To, yeah, he's yeah, just yeah. trying to justify his paycheck. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Sorry, I think I'm, it'll, it'll also tie into his development as, as like, they're probably going to, with the Darksaber, they're going to introduce, like, bringing the glory back to Mandalore and bringing the Mandalorians back together. And, you know, going from his really strict sect of Mandalorians that he grew up with. Yeah. It's all going to be a bunch them. of fun-loving Kiwis. Like, hey, bro, hey, bro. Have to <laughs> confront other, <laughs> other sects of Mandalore yeah. and navigate that. Yeah. Um, do you want to say anything before we move on to the Book of Boba Fett? No, no, I'm more than happy to move on. So, along. yeah, not only do they introduce Boba Fett, which we have problems in the first place, they're doubling down yeah. on the concept of Boba Fett, giving him his own show. I guess. I, I think, think it's, it's like, I think it's like a limited on, series, yeah. yeah. But At I will say, spin-off. I did enjoy him just flat out murdering uh, oh, yeah, a big, gangster. Big Fortuna, yeah. Yeah, I was like, that was, that was kind of cool. Yeah. But at the same time, I don't like oh, it. Oh, can I just say, I hate, 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 hate... The Blue Milk? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, but... Well, yeah, but... No, no, <laughs> I hate, hate, hate that... What, is it Ming-Na? Ming-Na Ming-Na Wen. When she just shows up and is like, Oh yeah, um, Boba Fett turned me into a robot lady. I'm fine now. I was like, <laughs> I hate this show. This is the worst show ever. Oh, and that reminds me. Sorry, I'm ranting. Oh, this is my last thing, and then I'll shut up. <laughs> when when they're in that lava base, and yep. uh, the the scientist with the glasses comes up. The glasses piss me off, but that's another story. Um, and he's like, uh, Baby Yoda has the highest M count. Oh, uh, yeah, no, no, sh- yeah. I literally turned it off. I had to yeah. turn it off and walk away. I said to Nathan, I'm like, they used the M word. Yeah, I was just like, they didn't say the whole thing, but that's enough. I, like, I was like, what are you doing? Did, was there a Disney lawyer who was like, you have to use the yeah. M word? This show went, f- you know, this yeah. show went from, okay, good. To Look, just you know what? It has no bearing on the story. Yeah, it, I, I think I yeah, thought, but it might just, uh, just because they say we could ignore they, it. Yeah. And hopefully they'll just they, leave it alone. They should just... The, the prequel, like like I said, the prequel stuff has crept in now. It's like, yeah. it's too late. Like, you can't. Yeah. Anyway, I'll shut up. Um, Any other thoughts before no, we move I think on? We, no, we wrapped yeah, it all up. We wrapped it all up pretty well. Alrighty. Shall we move to Tenet? Uh, have, Tenet. We, have you I seen think... Tenet, James? Tenet, yeah, twice. I, I don't think we have enough time for Tenet. <laughs> yeah, we, we don't. don't. We yeah, don't. I could rant um, for hours. Well, maybe we'll save that for another night. Oh, um, my heart sauce over an hour ago. Yeah, Can I just, but, uh, like... I just want to say I actually I, I I agree with all the criticisms, but I still really like it. Yeah. I need yeah. to watch it more. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, it definitely the second time I enjoyed it even more. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I, um, I think I yeah, I think we talked about it uh, when we had when we got together for New Year's. Yeah, I said it's leagues beyond uh, still what a lot of other movies come out. It's still yeah. a lot better than most other movies. Yeah, but as far as Nolan's work goes. Oh, it's, it's about middle of the it's pack. One, I think it's one of the weakest yeah. Nolan's, but it's still better than 99% yeah. of the stuff that comes out. Um, but we'll talk, yeah. we'll deconstruct that in another episode. Yeah. Because um, that's, that's we're going to need. There's a lot to unpack oh, there, yeah. a lot to discuss, especially um, meaning. You know, and, yeah. Yeah. and you guys have to watch it at least, yeah, at least twice to... You've got to yeah. watch it one yeah. more time yeah. for everything to soak in. Yeah. You've got to watch it backwards, though. So it also, miss anything. Yeah. It also set like it sound like I could hear it on my TV more than I could in I saw <laughs> yeah, it in IMAX yeah. and oh, put the just, subtitles yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, I didn't put the subtitles on, but <laughs> even then I was still you could hear it a lot better. Um, and I guess um, the the last thing I wanted to talk about tonight was the new Netflix documentary miniseries Night Stalker. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Have Richard you seen? Ramirez? Have you seen? Yeah, have you seen uh, it? I haven't watched so it. So full spoilers for this one. Uh, also, um, it, also, it, 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 it also, also content and trigger, trigger warning. warning. 
Um, it, we're going to discuss. He, yeah, he we're going to discuss some really bad crimes involving children and murder. He was a real um, piece of work. Uh, normally, we wouldn't talk about this on such an early time slot, but it's just a fascinating documentary. Um, because it's no holds barred, the production value is insanely high. Yeah, and a lot of the original people involved in I've the heard investigation, all, yeah, the victims' families. Yeah, I've like heard a lot. That yeah, they fa- they found everyone. Yeah, they, they, uh, even even people who met the guy in a thrift store, uh, give their their uh, account. Yeah, but it's also the original uh, investigators tell the whole story. It's not it's not the story of Richard Ramirez. It's the story of the detectives the, that yeah. catch yeah. him and, and the victims, it's, which is a good thing because yeah. you, people glamorize the. So Netflix uh, seem to be really hitting their stride when it comes to documentaries. Yeah. I haven't seen... I said to Nathan, I was looking through, after watching The Night Stalker, I was looking through their documentaries. There's a lot there that I remember getting positive reviews. And There's one about the Yorkshire Ripper that I really want to watch. Yeah. So I think that this is really interesting direction for Netflix to be going in, in like this kind of documentarian um, pathway. They're still... Because Netflix, of course, produce all kinds of content for all demographics. Yeah. Um, and you never really think about documentaries. I think, yeah, I think the problem um, with Netflix, as we've discussed, is that they just have so much stuff that yeah. all the stuff gets lost. But um, like yeah. you don't notice how but much cool stuff they have. I I first um, uh, we I first sort of found about uh, found out about this documentary because um, one I like the story of the Night Stalker. Yeah. Two. It was getting a lot of criticisms for being overly graphic and intense. Yeah, so, so I was interested. Well, I mean, you can't really no, but like, the, okay, so the thing is, that. when you when you see a documentary about a serial killer, it's usually very dry. It's very f- here are the very facts. facts. Yeah, here's a CG yeah. recreation of a or crime actors. or yeah. actors reenacting, and it's all it's very all cleaned up. Fat. Like the, with the Bundy documentary, for example, um, they had you know it's always like uh, with um, Zac Efron, it's like this you know good looking people playing the, the yeah. people's and they kind of also slightly turn it down yeah it's was they this romanticize w- it. yeah this, this one is not romanticized I'm not at gonna all. say most of the true crime sort of documentaries like that are family friendly but they're not yeah they they do water things they down. Water, it's not as intense this documentary as we said it's it's interviewing the detectives it's interviewing the victims some of these victims are only six years old when the crimes happen mm. it's intense and the um like and these there, there are crimes that they talk about in this documentary that have never been mentioned in any yeah. other documentary about the the killer because it's too, too distasteful. It's too, yeah, and it's very confronting, and like you see crime scene photos, some of yeah. which are very like, graphic. You see blood and you see like the actual crimes. Yeah. Um. But the reason we want some talk of it's censored. They don't. Yeah. yeah, yeah not, they, the yeah, reason we want to talk about a, the show. See, to 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 push the envelope, to like they actually killed a guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's they it. actually <laughs> killed <laughs> someone they, in front they, of you the way Richard Ramirez did it. No, but is. They very meticulously reconstruct the time frame, and it's all narrated by the original detectives. Um, but they also have parts of like Ramirez narrating stuff on tape. Oh, cool! And he actually asked for I mean, that. Not cool, but you know. Yeah, what no. I mean. He actually asked for that <laughs> stuff to be destroyed. Yeah. And yeah, they kept. They they didn't destroy it. They lied to him, and they just kept it. Yeah. yeah so you have him saying things like, uh, "So he was a self-proclaimed Satanist," mm. which. I think could should have been explored more, but my understanding is there's very little information about the Night Stalker in his own words about his own life anyway. Yeah. But there's things that he says like, "I am." Well, I can't even remember. It's like, "I am the underbelly of mankind," I am or beyond whatever. Beyond good and evil. Yeah, yeah he's like a madman. But yeah, but that, it's like it's, like, it's, it's yeah, interesting. It's guys. always interesting to hear these kinds of things from their own words. Yeah. But like, I, I do. I I'm not going to call anyone a liar. Mm. But there was a scene where there's like. I would call them a secondary detective towards the end of the season. And he, in the final episode, he's talking about how when he apprehended Ramirez, he's like, oh yeah, do you remember this case you wrecked on? I did that. And I thought to myself, I'm like, that's kind of random. There's no one to back him up. He's just saying that mm. the Night Stalker was involved in a case he never solved. Yeah, It's possible, entirely possible, because as we find out in the show, the Night Stalker, Ramirez, he actually murdered, they reckon, way more people than, than, they, than yeah. they actually caught. Yeah. Well, they caught him after he started his spree in LA, but like there was he, he would have been killing for a lot longer oh, than yeah. before when they think he started. So yeah. I, uh, these that, things that's, don't. That's start. a case it's like, with a lot of serial killers. It's like, killers. It's it's like their Ted, first victim is not like, usually their yeah. first. It's just the first. Yeah. It's like Ted Bundy allegedly they reckon killed his first victim at like eleven or twelve, but yeah. he never talked about it. Yeah. It's so probably the same thing with Richard Ramirez. Some Definitely. of the information could be suspect, but I think most of it to me seems 100% authentic because you don't always get some documentaries do this thing where 
it'll be like a best guess uh, mm. corroborated by experts. Yeah. Where this, since it's all in basically first person with the people who were physically present. Yeah. It's the most authentic, one of the most authentic documentaries on a, a, a serial killer, especially a deceased serial killer, I should, I should add. Yeah. Like a historical serial killer that you can actually get. So if you're interested in true crime, it's very, very good. And, and it's also how, the best how doc- many episodes? Four. Only four. Four about oh, forty five okay. minutes. Oh good. It's I, might very, s- I might smash it. It's out very well it's very much worth watching. It's yeah. very like you, like you end one episode, you're like, I've got to watch the next. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's because um, I was like, I want to watch it, but I, I don't know how much I can deal with that for an extended it's period. No, it's of time. it's stressful, <laughs> but it's also like it's engaging. Yeah. And it's it's the rare stuff. it's the sort of rare it meets in the middle where it's rare it it's a rare sort of true crime that doesn't glamorize him at all. Because yeah. it's from yeah. the perspective actually, of the detectives and the victims. Yeah. It like That's why he comes off. I'll be honest. It scared the shit out of me. Yeah, he yeah. comes. He's frightening. He, like he's frightening, and like the whole thing is, it's like you know, obviously, he, like at the end of the movie, like they're talking about um, how like he had these female fans, and it's like, but you're talking to the detectives, and these are like big dudes, and they're yeah. like, no man, like you could feel like you could feel the evil yeah. in the room. There is nothing yeah. to like about this man. He yeah. is evil. There's a scene where they talk to it. So there's a scene where Ramirez. Uh, being recounted by a librarian, he visits the library and he asks for a book on horoscopes and torture. And the guy, the guy who uh, served him, he says when he looked at, he, of course, this was before he was, uh, his name was released to the media before he was captured. Yeah. But he said Ramirez had a really strong body odor, but he said he had dead eyes mm. and he had like, you know, missing teeth or whatever. But he said he got the same feeling you would get if you were trapped in a corner with like a wild animal. Yeah. He had a feeling of, like they use the word evil, but it's like that, like a ma- real malevolence, like a physical, tangible, mm. like violence to him. Yeah, and like that's like, and they kind of show there's a, they show a photo a few times of him gritting his teeth, and he just looks like a complete psychopath, like yeah. unhinged, like madman. Mm. And you compare that to Bundy, who people do tend to glamorize this, you know, this kind of well dressed, um, well spoken, yeah. handsome kind of guy. I'm like, well, compare him to Ramirez. Ramirez is like evil incarnate. Yeah. But it's all about how you present sort of yeah. the facts in the story. Mm. Um, it, it's good, you know. I suggest that I, I suggest people watch it who like true crime. Yeah. Um, it, it's I would say it, it's, it is very confronting and it's graphic, not visually graphic or necessarily graphic. Wise, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, so if you're squeamish, don't please don't watch it. You won't have a good time. But it's more the story of the detectives as it is the story of Maria's because it details, especially Gil. Uh, it details Gills, the, the basically the protagonist, his home life, you know, his life itself, where yeah. he came from, you know, his like his journey from up the police ranks to, yeah. to homicide, and also just like you know where they found the clues, like the the actual like the red tape, like they could have caught him way earlier, if like another department had released evidence sooner. And yeah, like, that's a big problem. Yeah, and another like they this same department uh, installed a. Um, one of the witnesses was getting visits by Ramirez. So they had cops stationed it was outs- a, den- a dentist's yeah, office. outside the office. And one of the uh, guys up further in the ranks was like, oh, stop wasting our money, this get him this- out of there. The day after, the- he turns up and there's no policeman. The dentist is like, I pressed the alert button that they gave me, yeah. but it was widening correctly. <laughs> and so there was like people that he murdered that were murdered just because of ineptitude. Yeah. Like that happens, the, the, that the actual cause was because they didn't catch him yeah. because they kept cutting corners. Yeah. And it's like stuff like that. Interesting facts that you might not get. Um, well, I'm sure you get these facts everywhere. But like, you know, told in the story. It's yeah. like the, the story of the evidence, the paper trail. They used to with the provenance, like the, you know, the the history of the evidence. Yeah. Very interesting. I'll so is this done purely um, documentary style or yeah, is it yeah so there's so no like dramatization there's no, there's no dramatizations it's 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 narration by the detectives as well as and photos like, photos and video the, of the actual Invest- events yeah and talking to the victims and, and stuff like that um and he he, he it was interesting because he only died um 2007 he, yeah he was fairly young he was like in his 40s or 50s or something uh which is fascinating because with a lot of these serial killers often when they're waiting on death row they want to do interviews and stuff. Ramirez only did one interview, mm. I'm pretty sure. Mm, and he requested the tapes to be destroyed, but the journalist was like, nah. <laughs> it's like, what are you yeah. going to do about it? <laughs> That's why it's interesting because so there's weak. not a, I think that this is a rare example of Netflix making something that you can't really get elsewhere. There, Of course, there's heaps of books. There's books are always written about killers, just as in 20 there years. There are a lot of true, tri- uh, true 
crime documentaries, but yeah, Netflix is like the perfect yeah, place for, for distribution, this kind of, you know. Yeah. But it's also um it's fascinating just because a lot's not really known about him. Especially certainly not in his own words, and it's only limited, you know, you don't hear him do massive expositions. Yeah. But also his crimes were so graphic and so vulgar. Mm. Yeah. That like it's a story that really should only be told on Netflix. Because you're not doing it justice if you're not oh, yeah, presenting if you're doing all the facts. Like a CBS, yeah. NBC yeah. kind of special. Because even the crimes were vulgar. And yeah, even talking about him. Yeah. Even yeah. talking about him. Talking about. Don't talk about, 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 about him in polite company. No, talking about what he did is yeah. offensive. So yeah. it doesn't matter how you're pres- like if you're on and if you're watching they, it. On they a, discuss things in in this show that they don't discuss in other mediums mm. because it's, it's this case he did things in which the police actually decided not to pursue charges. Because they so didn't they don't have to read them so, out at the <laughs> yeah no literally because they didn't want to for the victims to have to go through what he did again yeah they're like we've already got him on fourteen counts of like yeah. murder or whatever it was so let's just you know forget about yeah, it. we know yeah. he did them that's insane but uh, yeah go really check it out if you're interested in crime yeah yeah I'll check it out I reckon that's all the time we have what yeah well, I mean, we've got a seven o'clock. Couple oh my minutes. god, that went fast! Oh, we've got you know. Well, look, we got through everything that I sort of I set out. Yeah, I didn't hey, know we did not get through Tenet. I didn't know this is what we actually came. Yeah, to but do. if we if I we can't like even Tenet, Tenet, we should have to do the whole episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's what I thought. Yeah. Waste of my time. Yeah, but. I didn't know this was gonna happen. I was just like, yeah, let's hang out and talk. You know, talk yeah. in between. You know, the radio and uh, talking between music and stuff. But well, uh, while we wait for Matty J to rock up. Um, I guess we'll uh, we'll go off the air. We'll play some music. But uh, thank you everyone for listening. It's uh, been this a long is time. A thank come you. back uh, special. Yeah, Alum Alum's Tuesday. Alum's review. Yeah, t- Alum's <laughs> taken over. I'm no I'm no longer the. That's what you get for not showing up. Um, <laughs> but uh, well, Betty J is running five minutes late, so we can keep the conversation, I guess, going if we do want to. But just about, I guess, more housekeeping kind of stuff. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, I was just gonna say that I, from now on the show will probably be more like this, where you guys start and I'll come in late because yeah. I got work. And we're sorry we haven't been around for so long, as you know. Yeah. Out in the world, things also, are a bit turbulent lately. Uploading wise, I probably won't upload. Yeah. You maybe one of you guys might. Yeah. Have yeah. We'll, we'll sort it out I bought, later. I bought my laptop. Okay. Um, and I'm recording, and I'm gonna try and learn how to edit a little bit. Yeah. Follow yeah. some guides. Um, and I'll have to get the details off you, and I can just start. Yeah. Uploading. So you can upload. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We will be back. Socials. We will be back next week. Um, so there will be more to talk about. It might not be as you're aware. Uh, previous listeners uh, to the show might be aware we used to do deep dives. Um, we still might do deep dives, but not every week yeah. because the content is not there yet. Yeah, especially like in when the, the cinemas reopen. The world we live in now, and of course with our personal lives, yes. sometimes it's not easy to do two hours on one subject. Yeah. But there's be... there's always something we can bring to you. There's always new things coming out on Netflix new subjects to talk about about the movie and TV industry. Yeah. Uh, so keep tuning in every week, 98.9 Northwest FM and wherever you get your podcasts from. Mm-hmm. And see you next Tuesday. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh.